Hello dreamers and welcome to The Sleepy Scholar, the podcast that helps you learn in your dreams. I'm Debbie and tonight we'll explore a very ancient tale about the power of music and the victory of good over evil. As a singer I can attest to the power of music and how it can guide you through some of the greatest challenges in life. And that's the lesson that is reflected in tonight's story, The Dagda's Harp. I'm so glad you decided to join me here tonight. It truly means a lot. If my stories stir your soul and help you to sleep, do consider subscribing to The Sleepy Scholar and maybe recommending your favourite story to a loved one. Your encouragement breathes life into these tales, keeping them vibrant and alive for all to enjoy for generations to come. Take a moment now to step into peace. Find your coziest spot, maybe tucked up in the fluffy folds of your bed, or lounging in the refuge of a comfy old couch. Gently close your eyes, letting them rest. They've worked hard today and have earned their peace. Take a moment to notice your breathing. Breathe in through your nose, allowing the cool night air to flow into your lungs. Hold it a second, then slowly let it escape through slightly open lips. With each rise and fall of your breath, Let the day's worries melt away into nothingness. Sink back into this soothing rhythm. Breathe in and out. Let any thoughts come and go. You don't need to hold on to them now. Just acknowledge them and let them float away like a bubble on a summer's breeze. Imagine you're perched atop a weathered rock in an ancient Irish meadow where every blade of grass whispers the tales of old. You are surrounded by verdant hills rolling out into infinity. The air is invigorating, laden with perfume of untamed daisies and buttercups. Your eyes rest on a tranquil lake, gleaming under the soft glow of a setting sun. The still waters mirror the surrounding hills, and gentle ripples whisper a soothing lullaby. Close by, an ancient forest stands proud, its leaves rustling with stories from bygone epochs. Holly, silver birch, hazel, ash and oak trees emanate a sacred stillness that consoles you. The soft rustle of leaves the distant chirping of a robin and the gentle hum of bees combine in the symphony nature has composed just for you. You hear the soft strains of a harp emanating from the woods. Each note resonates within you like ripples spreading across a pond. 
you move gently towards the music, allowing the music to guide your bare feet in the soft grass. This land and its age-old stories connect with your very soul, bringing you comfort and easing your worries. Breathe in deeply, allowing the blend of nature and music to sweep you away into a peaceful sleep. Fado, Fado, in that time long ago when gods and heroes roamed the serene hills of Ireland, the land was a realm of enchantment, where every rock and tree held secrets, and every breath carried the promise of magic. It was a place of wonder and beauty, where the very air shimmered with otherworldly energies, and the land itself was alive with the spirits of ancient deities. The Thuha de Danon, a race of gods and heroes, ruled over this bygone realm and lived in harmony with the land. Their leader was the Dagda, a powerful and wise figure whose many magical possessions were legendary. He wielded a massive club that could crush enemies on one end and miraculously heal wounds on the other. He also possessed a magical cauldron that always overflowed with food and drink providing endless sustenance to his followers. But among his many treasures, it was Unya, his harp, that was his most prized possession. This harp could control the very fabric of nature. With its strings made of silver and gold, Unya could produce enchanting melodies that could sway the seasons. When the Dagda played his harp, the warm winds of spring would blow, bringing new life to the land. As his fingers danced across the strings, summer sun would shine brightly, and crops would flourish in abundance. And when autumn came, Uhnya's haunting tunes would bring forth a riot of colours as the leaves changed and fell from the trees. But it was during winter that Uhnya truly showed its power. With a simple strum of its strings, the world would be covered in a blanket of snow and ice as winter took hold. And if ever there was a drought or a famine, the Dagda would play his harp and rain would pour down from the sky, nourishing the earth once more. Not only did Uhna control nature, but it also had the power to move the hearts of those who heard its music. The Dagda could summon joy with an upbeat melody but he could also bring sorrow with a mournful tune that brought tears to even the toughest warriors. And when it was time for rest, Uhnya's gentle lullabies could soothe even the most troubled mind into a peaceful sleep. Its music seemed to carry all the worries of the world away on its enchanting notes. It held secrets and stories untold, its music a bridge between the mortal and the divine. 
As rulers of the land, the Thuha Didanan lived in a grand palace crafted from living vines and blooming flowers. As they walked through the lush forests and verdant fields, flowers bloomed in their wake, and animals flocked to them as if drawn by an invisible force. They could communicate with nature, harnessing its energy to heal the sick and nurture crops. Their power was evident in the bountiful harvests and peaceful coexistence with all creatures. And when danger threatened their land, they stood united to defend it with their formidable magic. The Fomorians, on the other hand, were dark and menacing beings who sought to bring chaos and destruction. They were a race of giants and monstrous beings led by their own powerful chieftains who thrived on fear, lies, power and greed. The Fomorians burst out from the deep layers of the earth. Their magic was as twisted and dark as the deep caves they came from, and it was a power that couldn't be ignored. They fought hard against the strong and ready Thuhadidan in a never-ending battle to be on top. The land saw their fierce fights, left scarred and hurt by their huge clashes. The Fomorian's goal was simple, to spread their dark rule all over the land. They saw the world above ground as theirs by right, a part of their underground kingdom that they were set on taking over and making theirs, no matter the cost. The Fomorians had faces that seemed sculpted from nightmares, with jagged teeth protruding from misshapen mouths and eyes that glowed with a sinister light. Their limbs were contorted and knotted, giving them an unnatural gait as they moved. They made their homes on the very edges of the land, in barren landscapes constantly battered by howling winds and relentless storms. Their commander, Valor of the Evil Eye stood tall and mighty. His size alone was intimidating, but it was the single eye that struck fear into the hearts of all who beheld it. Its piercing glaze could defeat even the bravest warrior with a single look. The air was thick with tension as the Thuha Dedanan and the Fomorians prepared for the second battle of Moitura. This battle would be more than just a clash of swords and spears. It would be a riot of profound magical forces. The air crackled with energy as the two sides prepared to face off their powerful spells already pulsing with a vibrant intensity. The ground beneath them trembled with the weight of their combined power, sending ripples through the earth like waves on a stormy sea. This was no mere battle, but a fierce and awe-inspiring spectacle of magic and might. The Thuha de Danon, clad in shimmering armour that reflected the sun's rays, brandished their enchanted swords and spears. They stood tall and proud, 
ready to protect their sacred land and ancient traditions. Across the battlefield, the Fomorians approached, their hulking forms casting shadows over the ground. Their eyes glinted with malice and greed as they raised their crude weapons, determined to conquer and claim what was not theirs. The battleground stretched out as a vast plain, encircled by rolling hills that seemed to hold their breath in anticipation. Above, Storm clouds swirled ominously amidst flashes of lightning mirroring the turmoil below. The ground quivered underfoot as the two mighty armies drew near, each footstep echoing like a harbinger of impending doom. The Thuha de Danon were led by their noble leaders with the Dagda towering among them like an ancient oak. His eyes gleamed with determination as he surveyed the horizon. By his side lay his harp, Unya, wrapped in layers of rich protective cloth and hidden from sight. The instrument's gold and silver strings shimmered faintly even through its covering a clear indication of its overwhelming strength, a power considered too dangerous to be let loose in the chaos of combat. Marching forth fueled by an insatiable thirst for conquest and supremacy, the Fomorian army advanced under the command of their formidable leaders. Each leader more terrifying than the last, exuding unwavering resolve, etched into every feature and reflected in their piercing gazes. They stood as an indomitable force to be feared and respected by all who dared oppose them. As the two forces clashed, the battle raged with a ferocity that shook the very foundations of the earth. Magic and might collided in a symphony of destruction, the air crackling with the energy of spells and the clash of steel. The Fomorians charged through the Tuha Tadanan's defences, their axes clanging against shields and screens filling the air. In the midst of the chaos, they managed to snatch the Dagda's prized possession, his magical harp, Uhna. With victorious grins, the giants carried it far away to a deserted banquet hall, eager to revel in their latest conquest. The Dagda's heart thundered with rage as he witnessed the Fomorians taking off with his cherished harp. Its absence gnawed at him like a phantom limb, the void left behind suffocating him with despair. The tune it once played was the source of his divine power. Now, that music was stolen. Without it, the balance of the world was at risk. It was too powerful, too dangerous to end up in the hands of his enemies. A fire blazed within him. He knew he must reclaim it, no matter the cost, even if it meant tearing through legions to do so. The Fomorians smugly reveled in the belief that they had struck a devastating blow to their adversaries. They boasted and laughed, thinking the battle was all but won. However, they failed to grasp the unbreakable connection between the Dagda and his harp, a bond forged in the fires of ancient magic. 
The harp pulsed with an ethereal glow whenever the Dagda's fingers hovered near it. It was not merely an instrument, it was an extension of his very soul. Driven by a deep longing to get back his precious harp, the Dagda set off on an adventurous mission. Joining him were two of his most loyal friends, Lu and Ogma. Lu wasn't just any ordinary companion. He was renowned far and wide for his many talents and abilities, whether it was making weapons, writing poetry or leading armies. Lu had mastered them all. With skillful hands that could delicately create intricate trinkets one moment and wield a deadly sword the next, he was undeniably a master of innumerable crafts. His diverse skills made him an invaluable partner on their journey. On the other hand, Ogma represented raw power coupled with eloquent speech. As the respected champion of Thuha Dadanan, he radiated a sense of authority and respect that few could match. His muscular body showed off his unbeatable strength, while his keen intellect revealed a mind as sharp as his physical might. Together, the Dagda, Lu and Ogma were more than just allies. They were an unstoppable trio, each bringing their own special skills to fulfill their common goal, getting back the precious harp. Their feet sank into the uneven ground as they made their way through the treacherous terrain of ancient Ireland. Jagged rocks and gnarled trees lined their path, and a thick mist enveloped them, obscuring their view. The air was heavy with fear and tension and the looming shadows of the Fomorian Hall grew larger with each step. An unseen force seemed to breathe in the shadows, a silent menace that thrummed with potent energy. It was as if powerful entities were hidden in the shadows, their gaze fixated upon them ready to pounce at the slightest misstep. Then as they moved further into the unknown, a sudden spectacle unfolded before their eyes. A river. This was not just any body of water. It was a living, breathing entity. Its currents raced with an urgency that mirrored their own beating hearts. The river didn't just flow, it churned and roared with an intensity that could easily drag them into its depths. Drawing on his deep well of skills, Lou observed the rhythmic pattern of the river's currents noting the brief intervals of calm between the surges. He remembered the ancient incantations and spells taught to him, which could manipulate the elements. Calling upon his mastery of magic, Lu conjured a series of enchanted stepping stones that floated on the water, creating a stable path. With the path set and the timing perfected, Lu led the way, his movements precise and confident. The Dagda and Ogma followed, stepping only when Lu signalled it was safe. As they marched forward, a dense fog engulfed the group causing them to stumble and lose their sense of direction. 
It swirled around them in a hypnotic dance, shrouding everything in a ghostly grey hue. Ogma's voice echoed through the dense forest, each word a thunderous chant that seemed to shake the very trees. The ancient words caused the thick fog to swirl and dissipate like smoke in the wind. Gradually, the murky veil lifted, unveiling a narrow, winding path lined with tangled brambles and illuminated by shafts of sunlight piercing through the canopy above. The closer they got to the Fomorian Hall, the more oppressive the atmosphere became. The very air seemed to vibrate with malevolent energy and the shadows grew darker and more menacing. The hall itself was a forbidding structure, its walls made of dark stone and its entrance guarded by fierce warriors. Undeterred, the Dagda and his companions marched towards the Grand Hall, their footsteps echoing with resolve. The atmosphere was charged with expectation as they tightened their hold on their weapons and exchanged resolute glances. Each step closer to the looming entrance worsened the knot of tension in their stomachs, but they would not be defeated. Inside they knew the Formorians awaited, guarding the precious harp they had come to reclaim. The Dagda's heart was filled with a mixture of determination and hope, knowing that the fate of the Thuha de Danon rested on their success. As he arrived at the shadowy, candlelit banquet hall, the Dagda stood tall and bellowed for his harp. Unya Nestled among a pile of dusty stools and broken benches in the corner, seemed to vibrate with the recognition of its master's voice. With a sudden burst of energy, it soared through the dimly lit room, its strings vibrating and producing a deep, melodious hum that reverberated off the stone walls and filled every crevice of the hall. The Fomorians, caught off guard by the harp's sudden awakening, were momentarily stunned. The harp's strings glowed with an ethereal light, and its music seemed to weave through the air like a tangible force. As the Dagda reached out to take Urna, his hands trembled with anticipation. The moment he held the harp, he felt an electric energy flow through his body, invigorating every muscle and filling him with a sense of power and strength. A melody emanated from the strings with such purity, it cleansed the very air of the hall. First he played the Galtri the strain of sorrow. The Fomorians stood in a circle, their heads bowed as the sorrowful strain struck their dark hearts. The music was haunting and raw, revealing the deep-seated vulnerabilities and regrets that had turned them into creatures of such evil. As they listened, they wept uncontrollably, their dark hearts laid bare by the power of the music. Tears streamed down their faces, washing away the hardened exterior and exposing the pain and suffering that fueled their monstrous behaviour. The sound of the Galtri was like the wail of a thousand lost souls. 
its notes carrying the weight of centuries of sorrow and regret. The Fomorians, who had always prided themselves on their strength and ferocity, weakened with regret, their tears mingling with the dust of the hall. The Dagda's playing evoked a deep sense of empathy and understanding, reminding them of their humanity that they had long forgotten. Next, the Dagda played the Gyanthri, the strain of joy. The cheerful and uplifting tune brought forth peals of laughter from the Fomorians their menacing demeanour transformed by the magic of the harp. The Gyanthri was a celebration of life and happiness, its notes dancing through the air like rays of sunshine breaking through storm clouds. The Fomorians who had only known darkness and strife were filled with hysterical joy. Their laughter echoed through the hall, a stark contrast to the grim environment that had previously prevailed. The music reminded them of the simple pleasures of life, the beauty of existence and the joy that could be found in even the smallest moments. Finally, the Dagda played the Suntri the strain of sleep. The soothing and calming melody lulled the Formorians into a deep, peaceful slumber, their hostility quelled by the enchanting music. The soon three was a lullaby for the soul, its gentle notes undoing centuries of wickedness. As the Suntri's hypnotic music surrounded them, the Fomorians' movements slowed and their eyes drooped. Their once fierce roars turned into soft groans as they collapsed to the ground, completely under the Suntri's control. The tension and aggression that had defined their existence melted away, replaced by a profound sense of calm. The Dagda's playing enveloped them in a cocoon of serenity, guiding them into a restful and restorative sleep. The hall was filled with a soft, rhythmic symphony of peaceful breaths. The tension and aggression that had once filled the space, replaced by a tranquil lull. The healing melodies of Uña's music had woven a spell of peaceful sleep over the Fomorians, their bodies and minds now at ease. The sound of breathing was almost as enchanting as the music itself, reminding all who heard it of the beauty and simplicity of life. The Dagda's mastery of the harp had not only subdued their enemies, but also brought a sense of healing and harmony. The melodies of the Gultri, Gyanthri and Suntri had woven together a story of sorrow, joy and peace, each note evoking the healing power of music. With the Fomorians defeated and the harp nestled securely in his arms, the Dagda and his companions set off on their journey home. The once foreboding path now seemed to welcome them home, bathed in the soft glow of twilight. The air was crisp and filled with the fragrance of blooming heather, carrying a sense of renewed vitality and hope that made their steps lighter and their spirits soar. The mist-shrouded landscape hummed with an unspoken gratitude, 
a recognition of the tremendous sacrifices that had been made, the tears that had been shed to bring about this hard-won tranquility. Though the storm clouds of the past still lingered on the horizon, their shadows a reminder of the precariousness of peace. For now, the land basked in the warmth of hope's gentle embrace. A fragile yet defiant light against the gathering dark. Upon their return, the Thuha de Danan welcomed the Dagda and his companions with open arms. The news of their victory and the return of Uhnya spread like wildfire, filling the hearts of their people with joy and relief. The Dagda's harp, once again in its rightful place, became a symbol of hope and resilience. The Dagda played Uhna for his people. The strains of the Galtri, Gyanthri and Suntri touching the hearts of all who listened. The sorrowful notes of the Galtri reminded them of the trials they had faced and the strength they had shown in overcoming them. The joyful notes of the Gyanthri celebrated their unity and the beauty of their shared existence. The soothing notes of the soon tree brought a sense of peace and rest. A reminder that even in the midst of turmoil, there could be moments of tranquility. The Dagda, with his harp by his side, looked out over his people with a sense of pride and contentment. He knew that the journey they had undertaken and the challenges they had faced had only strengthened their bond and their resolve. The power of Uhnya had not only vanquished their enemies, but also brought a sense of healing and harmony to their world. The balance of their world had been restored, and the Tuha de Danan thrived once more. The Dagda's journey and the magic of Uhnya continue to inspire generations even today. A beacon of harmony and resilience in a world of constant change. This ancient tale teaches us that even in the face of suffering and adversity, there is always hope and the possibility of harmony. Allow yourself to sink deeper into relaxation, feeling the soothing embrace of the night. As you drift off to sleep, carry with you the wisdom of the Dagda and the harmony of Uhnya. Let the strains of the Gultri, Gyanthri and Suntri weave through your dreams, guiding you to a restful and restorative sleep. May your dreams be filled with peace and joy, and may you awaken refreshed and renewed, ready to face the challenges of a new day. Remember that, like the Dagda, you have the strength and wisdom to overcome any obstacle and restore balance and harmony to your life. Thank you for walking with me hand in hand through the lavish landscape of Irish mythology. Till we meet again, I bid you a restful night and dreams as sweet as the strains of the Dagda's harp. Ihawai. Good night. <laughs>